Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com, and today I want to talk to you about fishing wacky rig worms. This is a great way to catch fish almost year round, really. It's a great method to do it, and all it really is is you're just taking a straight tailed worm any size and just sticking a hook through it. That's the basic setup, it's sticking a hook right through the middle. That's all it is, looks like that. Okay, you just, it's very basic, right? It's kind of an odd way of fishing it. There's many, uh, many theories on how it came to that orange origin, but I'm not going to get into that today. Now, to rig it, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. Matter of fact, it's been so popular that it spawned kind of a cottage in industry. There's all kinds of little O-rings, there's weighted O-rings, there's specialized hooks, special jig heads, there's, it goes on and on and on. There's all, you can go hog wild with all the different types of specialized stuff you can get for fishing wacky rigs. For me, I like to keep things simple and basic. I want to keep my tackle organized and clean. So I don't, I try to shy away from one-off stuff. Things that are just one-trick ponies that are, that are used for only one type of, of way of fishing. You can't get completely away from it, but with wacky rigging, you can. So I don't buy any O-rings. I don't buy specialized weights and hooks. I just repurpose the stuff that I already have in my tackle box. Now, if you use all this stuff and you use those O-rings and you feel that it works great for you and helps the, the worms last longer, they don't tear up and that kind of thing, man, knock yourself out. Have fun with it. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just telling you, for me, I try to shy away from all that stuff. So I just use a jig head. And in this instance, uh, I'm fishing a four inch hand poured lure and that's what you want. You need a bait that, that's got a little flexibility and quite a bit of flexibility. So a hand pour for me is what I use. And then just a little ball head jig with a wire guard. Can you see that wire guard on there? And that wire guard kind of helps keep the weeds and stuff off of it and helps prevent me from hooking up on any wood or branches or any kind of debris on the bottom. You know, very basic uh, setup. If I'm fishing in, say, rocky areas, I might switch to a football head jig, or if I'm fishing really weedy, then instead of using a ball head, I might use a little bit more of a bullet sinker kind of uh, shaped head. But that's about it. I, you know, I, I got a whole bunch of different jig heads in, in my uh, boat, so I just repurpose what I have. Makes it really easy that way and keeps the clutter down. I'm fishing, you know, in, in the springtime, I might get a little bit bigger. I might be using a six inch worm with a heavier jig head. In those cases, I might be fishing it on a, on a lot thicker line. Today, I'm fishing the spinning tackle. I'm using six pound copolymer line on this. The reason being, actually, I'm sorry, this is fluorocarbon. I'm using six pound fluorocarbon on it. Okay, real light finesse approach. Fluorocarbon is really sensitive. You're gonna need that with a real light bait. And, you know, I don't use braid because braid tends to, is more buoyant. And it kind of drags on this bait and, and inhibits the way it falls. Uh, and that's another key thing is, you know, I use a weight on here. Now, some people will fish a wacky rig weightless, but to me, that doesn't work. With the whole beauty of this bait is as it falls, it does this action all the way down, okay? It just flutters really nicely. The weight it accentuates that. The weight, it falls down a little bit faster and it wiggles really nicely. If you're fishing weightless, just a hook on there, I feel it just kind of falls like that. It really doesn't move. It might move a little bit, but the weight just, the hook isn't weighted enough by itself to uh, cause that action. If I'm going to fish it weightless, then I'll just fish it Texas rig, much like I do a Sanko, and I'll fish it that way. So for me, a weight is critical. This is just a, you know, I think this is a 3 16th ounce weight, real lightweight, fishing on six pound fluorocarbon line. Straight floral, I don't use leaders or anything like that. I want a direct connection to it. The less leaders and less knots I have between me and, and the bait, the less likelihood I have for break off. So it's a straight floral. Fishing on a spinning rod, I got a seven foot medium light action rod here. Perfect for this setup. There's a light wire hook that I'm fishing, so the, the rod has to have some flex and give to it, some bend. So when I'm fighting this fish, I don't want to straighten the hook out, nor do I want to break the line. So, nice medium light action rod, perfect for this setup. As far as colors are concerned, the colors of baits, you know, it's funny, I have not found any kind of connection as far as color and how many fish I catch. It's, it's all about the action. This is, this is a, I don't even know the name of this color really, honestly. Um, it's, a, it's just a hand port that I get from Don Ivino. You can look him up online and find his, find his baits. But, uh, 
I've fished all different kinds of colors, white, black, everything in between, and I've caught fish on it. So I think it's more about the action than it is the color. But uh, you know, as a general rule of thumb, natural colors tend to, be, tend to produce in clearer water or most conditions. Green pumpkin is your old standby. So fish, if you really don't know what to, what to use, fish a green pumpkin, you can't go wrong with that. But like I said, it's, it's more about the action than the color. All right, so there's the lure. There's the line we're gonna use, the rods, the setup, the whole nine yards. Now let's go fish it. All right, what I have here is a long tapering point that I'm fishing, and I'm right towards the end of it, right where it drops off into deeper water. And that's a perfect candidate for the wacky worm. All you're gonna do is cast out there and let it fall on slack line. Watch that line carefully though. Watch where it enters the water. See if it twitches, pops, jerks, does anything unnatural, anything that you didn't cause, well, something on the other line is playing volleyball with it, so you better set the hook. So pay close attention to that line when you throw it out there. Just toss it out there, flip the bail over, or engage your reel, and then just carefully watch that line as it falls. And let it fall all the way down to the bottom, straight down. Just let that worm do its thing as it goes all the way down. That's the action that's enticing. That's, that, that's what the fish want. Once it hits the bottom, and it's really easy to tell when it hits the bottom because the line just goes slack on you. So there it hit the bottom. Just lift up. I got some weeds down there. I went in a little too shallow here. So I'm going to reel this back up and go back out because I just picked up a weed. But what you're going to do is you're just going to work it back to the boat nice and slow and let the bait do its thing. Let's cast that out a little bit further. I'm trying to get right on that weed line. I went a little bit too much on the inside of it. All right, so let it fall. Watch that bait, watch that line as it drops. Make sure fish doesn't pick it up as it's falling because that's the key to this bait is a lot of times those bites happen on slack line. All right, now it's on the bottom. Lift up, let it drop. Bring your rod tip right back down to the nine o'clock position. Bring it back up to about 11 o'clock and follow it on down. Just go right on back down with it. So as it's dropping, you wanna reel up the slack, but you don't wanna reel the bait. Just reel up, go up to about the 11 o'clock position, drop the rod tip down as you're reeling, let that bait fall naturally, but you're kinda of keeping connection with it. And this is what people call, you know, letting it fall in a semi-slack line. When they refer to that, that's what that's all about. I picked up a couple more weeds again. Right on the edge of that, but since I'm picking up weeds, I'm going to show you another technique. This is how you fish it across weeds. This time you don't let it drop all the way down. Let it drop quite a bit, <clears throat> but don't let it drop completely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of swim it back. You want to keep it just over the tops of the weeds. So it's just a steady reel. Hold the rod tip about 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock position, somewhere in there, 8 o'clock. You want to keep it kind of down, ready for that strike. You always want to be ready for that strike. Just kind of reel it back in slowly, and you're going to let that worm do its thing underwater. And, I, you know, I really don't know what it is that this bait resembles, <laughs> honestly. But, man, the fish just love it. Absolutely love it. So that's one way. It's just a straight retrieve. So we've done, you know, the, the lifting it back up and letting it fall back down and then a straight retrieve. Let me show you another one. When it reaches down to the bottom, now we're gonna impart a little bit more action to it and get their attention. Lift up on it, see if there's any fish. Now, I don't feel a fish. So you're gonna pop it a little bit, just with the rod tip. Bring it back down and let the rod tip. It's the same action we had before, but now we're kind of jerking and popping it. We're giving it just a little bit of an action as it falls. Real great way to catch fish this way, all right? And then finally, one other way I like to do it, I cast it back out there. 
let it fall again. Pay real close attention to that line because <laughs> that's when they always hit. But let it fall straight down. When it hits down there, you want to feel. Just lift up a little bit and see if there's a fish on the other end. I don't feel a fish right now. I'm a little bit further out off the point now. I'm letting it fall a bit further. But now as we're going to do, I think I'm away from those weeds. We're just going to drag it on the bottom. Just let it fall. Let it sit. Give it a rest. And then you want to drag it a little bit more on the bottom. Okay? And here you're just crawling it along. I don't know. You just kind of make it look like a, like a fish that's injured or, or some kind of bait fish. But those are just some of the different ways that you can fish this bait. Experiment. Play with it. There's all kinds of different things you can do. There's no right or wrong way to fish it. That's why this bait is so versatile and why so many people like it. And they catch so many different fish on it. Different baits, different techniques, different tactics. It's a great, fun way to fish. Have fun with it. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.